Hi everyone, I am Dr. Brian Little, and if you've been reading my blog, you've noticed that I've not really done a video like this before, um, but I missed most of September because I've been prepping for a recital, and so I haven't really had time to write, so I thought that today's blog I would actually do a video for. I've been getting kind of the same question from some of my students and from students at a masterclass that I taught at last week, and it's how do you practice in order to learn your music as quickly as possible. We all have a lot of music we have to learn, we have deadlines on this music, and we wanna be able to get as much done in as little amount of time as possible. We wanna be really efficient. And so I've been telling my students about this process that I use, and I've been telling students at master classes I've been teaching about this process, so I thought I would write about it, and then I thought it actually might be easier if I do a video so you can actually see what it is that I do rather than have me write about it and then you try to figure out through writing what I am actually doing. So this is what I do when I'm trying to learn something. Um, this is one of my most favorite practice strategies and I started using this particular practice strategy uh, during my doctorate. So the first thing I do when I start any new piece of music is I play it really really slowly like obnoxiously slowly with a metronome. I always tell my students obnoxiously slowly. You turn the metronome on, you play it extremely slowly, and you're just kind of getting to know the piece. You're figuring out where are these trouble spots that might trip me up later. And after that, I use interval timers. So an interval timer can be on your phone. It's one of those apps that some people use for high interval, high intensity interval training. There we go. High intensity interval training. And you can get apps for this. Uh, it can do like a two minutes of uh, some workout activity with one minute off. And I was using that on my phone for quite a few years for this. So basically it's two minutes working on something really, really hard and then one minute rest. And then two minutes working on something else really hard, one minute rest. And I've kind of switched it up a little bit. And I've decided to start using cube timers. I have been on my phone way too much. I've been noticing my eyes have been strained and I read music mostly from my iPad. So I've had to be very careful about how I am actually looking at my phone, how much I'm looking at my phone, what I'm doing on it. So I switched to cube timers. These right here, okay? So my first cube timer I got was this one. I tend to practice, this is gonna be backwards because I'm looking on my phone like this. My first cube timer was 25 minutes. This is my general amount of practice time. I do a 25 minute block and then I take a break, five, 10 minutes, and then I do another 25 minute block and then I take a longer break. And this has a five, a 25, a 15, and a 45. So this was really great so that I could do the 25 minute block, didn't have to look at my phone, didn't have to have notifications come up on my watch. And then I thought, I need other times. So I got this one that has a 10, a 5, 30, 20. So I've been using the 20 for warm up. And then I got this one. 1, 3, 5, 10. So here's what I've been doing. I have been picking places in my music that I need to work on, that I need to learn, that I need to get into my memory. And uh, I do that by literally marking them. So this might be kind of hard to see, but I got a bunch of little markings. It's usually maybe a measure, a couple measures at a time. You can kind of see where I have these markings. This is the Yubayashi Sonata that I'm playing for a recital later this month. So you can kind of see I've picked one, two, three, four, five spots on this page that I wanted to work out. And then what I do is I take my 25 minute timer and I turn it on and when you do that, there's your little timer right there at the bottom. So the 25 is at the top and you can see the time there, how much time has elapsed. And you can put it on a low sound or a high sound volume wise, okay? And once I, as soon as I turn this over, so that 25 minutes is going, I turn this on three minutes. And then I spend three minutes working through each one of these little sections that I have picked in a very specific way. So three minutes on one, one to two measure section. 
and I will practice it slowly with the metronome. I will change rhythms. I will change articulations. I will go one note at a time, trying to make sure that my intonation is good. I will work on it in as many different ways as I can in three minutes. When that timer goes off, I flip it to one minute immediately. Okay, and then I have one minute and stare at the ceiling. <laughs> can look out the window. It's raining today. I can watch it rain. And then when that timer goes off, flip it right back to three minutes and I go to the second section. Second one to two measures. When the timer goes off, one minute break. And I do that until I get through all five sections, which takes roughly 24 minutes. And then I have one minute to either take a break or maybe try doing a longer run of something or be done. And that's, that's done. And then I'll take a longer break. I sometimes will set a timer for that as well. And then I will come back and I will pick another place in either this piece or another piece and I'll do the same thing. I'll pick five measures, five two measure segments, something like that. And I'll start the process all over again. And so generally I've been hitting the same sections every other day, sometimes every day, depending on what I feel I need, but definitely every other day. And that's how I've been learning the music. And then when I start piecing things together, I find that my memory has really, really absorbed a lot of this, a lot of this technical stuff that's happening in the music. And so it really helps me learn music faster. So I've really learned my recital for the end of this month in about four weeks. And now I'm playing longer sections. So now I'm doing, you know, longer times on the cubes and playing through things. Still with the metronome. Gotta make sure you're with the metronome. Or with accompaniment that I find online. So it's a really, really great way to learn music quickly and to really focus in. Now, when I first started doing this, I started doing this with um, Dr. Elizabeth Brightbill. She was covering a sabbatical when I was doing my doctorate, and she suggested this type of practice. She had read about it, and I tried it, and I came back the next week, and she asked me, how did it go? And I was like, well, I hated it, but it worked. And I thought about it more, and the reason that I don't like it is that it doesn't feel comfortable you know that wonderful feeling we get when we are just flowing through music oh it feels wonderful but you shouldn't have that feeling when you're first learning a piece that's what we get when we have learned the piece so if you're kind of in that mood in that mode when you're learning a piece that means your brain has not focused on what you're doing so the reason this feels uncomfortable is because you are not allowing your brain to get to the point where it kind of switches off and does things on autopilot. It must be focused. It must be focused for a very, very short period of time. And then when the timer goes off, I can just look away. I can do something else. And then when the big timer goes off, I take a longer break, five, 10 minutes, and then I will do another session of it. And it's okay that this type of practice doesn't feel good, right? That's not what this is meant to do. This is meant to help you really learn something and get it into your physical memory. And the other key to this type of practice is going to sleep at night, getting sleep at night, getting some rest. Your brain creates memories while we are sleeping. So if you're trying to practice like this with this hyper focus for short periods of time, and then you're not getting enough sleep your brain is not going to be able to create those memories overnight. So we have to make sure that we are getting good amounts of sleep and that we are practicing in a way that encourages our brain to create those memories. And then once you're starting to feel really confident with these sections, when you're a few, like a month, four weeks out from a recital, then you start piecing it all together and playing longer and longer sections. And you're gonna find that some of these places that you thought might be challenging are just a breeze now because you've played them so many times in such a focused way that they are in your memory. And that's what we're going for. So that's how I do interval timer practice. I'm gonna have a link in my link tree or in the description of this video, depending on where you're seeing it. If it's on YouTube, it'll be in the description. If you're on TikTok, there'll be a link in my bio. And you can go buy these. They're just on Amazon. I think they're about $15, something like that. So if you think this might be good for you, if you think you want to avoid using your phone as a timer and you're trying to get away from technology, uh, yeah, check these out. They are working really, really well. And I'm feeling really prepared uh, for my recital on the 24th of October at Capital University, Columbus, Ohio. So if you're in Ohio, love to see you there. Um, but yeah, so that is how I practice to get music under my fingers and into my memory. 
I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Send me a DM. I'd be happy to answer them. I hope you all have a great day. Bye.